Welcome to Temple Terrace Presbyterian Church. I am Lori Shaw, your liturgist today. And I'm Robert Shaw, the pastor here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining, joining your, your voice and, and prayers, prayers with, with ours, strengthening, strengthening our worship, worship of, of God. God. The church is open and distributed today among many house churches, including yours. Invite your family, friends, and neighbors to celebrate with us every Sunday via video. We are interested in your joys and concerns. Please send them to us by email or by phone at 988-3514. Visit ttpresbyterian.com for contact information. On the first Sunday of each month, we collect for our Good Samaritan Fund. This fund provides utilities and other assistance for people living in Temple Terrace. If you wish to contribute, include a note with your offering indicating how much you wish to designate for the Good Samaritan Fund. The Wednesday evening Bible study at 6 o'clock meets via Zoom. To join the discussion and see your church friends, contact me to receive a study guide and login details. Today we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper in each of our homes. To celebrate with us, you may wish to have a piece of bread, a cracker, a bottle of grape juice, or even wine, or and a glass for each participant. If you wish, you may also hold your hands in prayer, remembering that when we last sup held this supper together, and in hope of when the next time we'll celebrate together face to face. You need not leave your homes to get anything. Sharing this meal together is what truly matters. You may pause the video here if you need time to prepare. We do not know what the fall will look like for our children and youth. You can make a difference by providing the tools and supplies they need to start their school year with optimism and hope. Please support Bethel Farmworker Ministry through Amazon Smile. The session requests all congregation members to join a Zoom.us meeting on Sunday, July 12th at 11 a.m. to dissolve my pastorate relationship with this re uh, congregation for my retirement. Please use your name when you log in so that we may recognize you. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God as the Bible and the light enter. Please join me in the responsive invitation to worship as shown on the screen. Judge your people in righteousness, O Lord. Bless your afflicted ones with justice. The, the Lord, Lord defends, defends the afflicted among the people and saves the children of the needy. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise, Praise be to his glorious name forever. May, May the whole earth be filled with his glory. glory. Please sing along with Ashley and Kevin as we sing verses 1 and 3 of Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. With humility and integrity, let us approach the throne of grace together, using the words on the screen and then privately in silence. Lord, Lord we, we marvel, marvel at, at the thought, thought of a well-fitted well yoke, yoke, a burden scaled to match our frames. We do not know how to rest in the promise of such labor. Some of us are weary from unceasing responsibility. Others find no welcome in the marketplace. Forgive our blind striving, our stifled concern, the judgments we cast on others. Make yourself known to us in the silence. Friends, you have been freed for service in Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, we, we are forgiven. forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and, and also with you, and also with you. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning in the 11th chapter at the 28th verse. Hear now a word from the Lord. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, Come to me, and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. The yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. If you took everyone who ever fell asleep at church and laid them end to end, they'd be a lot more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's kind of what Matthew intended by uh, telling us this parable that Jesus told about people finding rest for our souls. But the question for us is, how has worship provided you rest? Which Bible story helps you understand who you are? For me, I find great comfort and great understanding in the story of Jonah and the whale. Every time I read this story, it helps me learn something new about me. It helps me understand how would I am in the world and find rest for my soul. I hope you too can find a story that you find understanding so that you too may find rest for your soul through worship. Thanks be to God. Ashley and Kevin have shared with us a beautiful musical tribute that blends familiar songs to honor the country with which God has blessed us. Thank you. 
our second scripture lesson this morning is from Genesis, beginning in the 24th chapter, the 34th verse. Hear now a word from the Lord. So Abraham's servant said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. The Lord has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys, and Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, you shall not take for a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, to get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your, from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. And before I had finished speaking in my heart, and there was Rebekah coming out with her jar of, on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down the jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also pour water for your camels. So I drank, and she watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Micah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter for my master's kingdom and for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Faith sometimes is nice, but gold is better. At least that's what <laughs> culture would tell us. And maybe we do tend to favor substance over things that are merely spiritual. Rebecca, or rather, Abraham's servant was making this speech to Rebecca's brother. And when he saw the gold nose ring and the heavy gold bracelets on his sister's arms, and he had heard her tell what the man had said to her about the camels and the slaves and all the flocks, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring and said to him, come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. I think Rebecca's brother also had a slight favor of substance over things that are merely spiritual. Yet, we know that God does answer prayer. At another church, we had carefully staked out a tent in front of the church the night before on a Saturday night because we were going to have a big worship outside with animals and all kinds of guests. And then during the night, an unexpected storm picked up the tent and blew it up against the church, bending it out of shape. When I got there early, I looked and saw this tent blown up against the church, and I'm wondering, how will we get it down safely? And how are we going to get all those pipes straightened out again? We're going to have to take it all apart and put it back up, and who's going to provide? God came in and provided and as I was standing there, the wind suddenly shifted and gently lifted the tent and very gently eased it back to where it was supposed to stand. At that moment, the neighbor from across the street came over and he saw what had happened and he helped us take it apart. And he had a tool to straighten all of those pipes to put it back together. And by the time worship started, the tent was up, back the way it should be, God had indeed provided all that we needed. 
Here again, the promise that in the servant's prayer, he says, when I came to the spring today, I said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant me success on the way to which I have come. Real faith shows through our actions. Rebecca showed her faith by following in Abraham's footsteps, literally leaving the land of her family, the land that she had lived and grown up in, and gone off into the wilderness. Her response of leaving faithfully home and family to further God's promises shows her trust in things that are merely spiritual. We see today faith in those who have answered the call to advance liberty and justice for all people. 244 years ago, we saw people step up in faith and in surety, confident that God was with them. We saw 256 years ago during the Civil War where people stepped up to go forth in faith to secure liberty and freedom for all. We see it today as people dare to go out into the streets and ask painfully and prayerfully for justice and liberty for all. There is no guarantee of success. 244 years ago, a third of the population was truly favoring the British. A third wasn't even sure. It was only a one third that was confident of our success. 156 years ago, families divided amongst themselves. Today, we are still divided. There is no guarantee of success except in Christ Jesus, who wishes for us liberty and freedom for all. 244 years ago, the third of the people in 13 small colonies decided to separate from England, and another third sought to advocate strengthen that same union. Would you dare to attack a world power with that kind of backing? Except, perhaps, trusting in God and that the kingdom of heaven would be possible and would be advanced by your actions. We know today that they did succeed by trusting God. And they wrote in this document that we revere this day that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, things that we hear today in our gospel and Old Testament readings, the presence of God in our lives. When we come to worship, recognizing God's hand in our personal success and in our successes as a church and in our nation's churches, so it is that we hear in the 24th chapter of Genesis. In this chapter, there are no visions, there are no angels. It is merely Abraham's servant who, after he had prayed and saw on the actions of those around him, he saw God and his success. Hear again his prayer. And I praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Let us also praise God for all the tomorrows that he has guaranteed us and his presence with us. Thanks be to God. Please sing along with the Gillespies as we sing the first two verses of Fight the Good Fight.
of life. We come to you from many places. Some hearts overflow with joy and with gratitude. Others are barely hanging on to hope and faith. For some, this is an ordinary morning. For others, every step feels fragile. O oh, Holy One, meet us where we are. Bind us to each other so that in community of your love, we might discover our wholeness. We name before you now the concerns of our hearts. And we name before you especially for Joe, for Martha, for Chrisanne, for Shelby, and for Mary, for the friends and family of Maria, for all those isolated by quarantine or by illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray this day for children who cannot take safely or comfort for granted. Lord of life, we pray for your children all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh, author of time, we ask for your blessing upon our work and upon our rest in jobs that feed our souls, in jobs that do not satisfy, in volunteer service and in routine daily tasks, in long hours of caregiving, in hours we do not know how to fill. Come to us and show us how we might serve you in all these hours. We pray for those whose needs we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of all creation, enlarge the circles of our concern. Teach us to care for brothers and sisters whose names we cannot say, whose challenges are daunting. Through their needs are like our own. Teach us to care for the earth on those gifts we all depend. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who suffer violence in this land. Teach us to love one another and to guide those who cannot control themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Look with favor this day upon all those celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary this week, including Ann Ross. May they grow in wisdom and in grace. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our, our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. When Rebecca's family asked whether she would yield her life to God's purpose, she answered, I will. Every day, each of us is challenged to yield our lives to God's service. May the offerings we now bring to you symbolize our yielding to the service of God. Thanks to your generous gifts, ministry continues at Temple Terrace Presbyterian Church. In these unusual times, please make your offerings through automated payments through your bank or with the Give Now button near the top right hand corner of our website. Checks by mail are also greatly appreciated. Let us pray. Gracious Creator, you have laced our lives with blessing. As we present these offerings, we also tender our lives. Make us your bold and faithful people, willing to go forward in faith wherever you would lead us, that we might be a comfort in the world. We pray in the name of Jesus, by the gift of your empowering spirit, Amen. Today, we invite you to celebrate God's gift of communion in your homes. Decide among yourselves who will break the bread. 
and who will pour the wine. The table that we share does not belong to this congregation, nor to the Presbyterian Church, but to Christ Jesus, who invites everyone who trusts in him to share in this meal. Jesus says to us, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. No one who comes to me will I cast out. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is indeed our Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in this feast, which is prepared for the saints of all times. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. O Lord, you are creator and ruler of the universe. You formed us in your wisdom, and you created all things by your power. You set us in families upon the earth to live with you in faith. We, we praise, praise you for the good, good gifts of bread and wine, and, wine, and, for, and the for the table that you spread in the world as a sign of your love for all people in Christ. When we turned from you, you did not turn from us. You delivered us to freedom and covenanted to be our sovereign God. When we were stubborn and stiff-necked, you spoke to us through prophets and apostles. Who saw the day when justice will triumph and peace will reign over all the earth. In the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, Christ Jesus, to be our Savior. In him, your word, which dwells with you in all eternity, became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. And we witnessed your glory, Emmanuel, God with us. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, for sending your only son Jesus to live among us, full of grace and truth. He made you known to all who received him. Sharing your joy and our sorrow, he healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We, we praise, praise you that, that he overcame death and, and is, is risen, risen to rule the world. Christ, Christ is still the friend of sinners. sinners. We trust, we trust you to, to overcome, overcome every power that could that hurt or divide us. We, we will, will celebrate victory with you. you. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we take from your creation this bread and this wine, and we give you praise and thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of our, your faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ has, has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We thank you that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks for it, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and the blessing, and he gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me.
Remembering his dying and rising, we offer you this bread and wine and ourselves in grateful service. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and upon all your people here gathered today. Breathe your spirit over all creation that together we may cultivate peace in every corner of the world. Then bring us to that blessed mountain where with the meek and pure in heart, we will live forever in blessedness as we taste the fruits of heaven. Glory, Glory to, to you forever. forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. By the inspiration of your life-giving spirit, we worship you, creating God, in songs of endless praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the bread of heaven, the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. This is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ shed for you. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. God of glory, we give you, you thanks, thanks for this for feast of, of your, your goodness, goodness and, and grace. grace. Send, Send us out to share the bread of life with all who hunger for your love. love. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. Please join Kevin and Ashley as we sing the first and second verses of our closing hymn. May the Lord bring good from broken desires. May Christ share his yoke with us. And may the Spirit breathe wisdom into all our hearts. Amen. If you are finishing this worship service between about 10.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, please join us for an e-fellowship hour. Check your email this, for this morning's message and click Zoom Fellowship. You may join with a computer, a smartphone, or even an ordinary touchstone phone. Goodbye. <laughs>